I want to talk with you about why I bought a red Komodo. Let's begin with the high quality image. It is an amazing thing to be able to use professional tools and not be a full on professional. I look at it as having a fixation or wanting to drive a sports car and recognizing like you're never going to necessarily be in Formula One, but it's a nice thing to be able to have tools that professionals use and be able to continue to upskill over a period of time. And that's what I'm finding with this. The imagery straight out of the camera is better than the DSLR that I'm filming on. And that's before I do any type of manipulation in DaVinci or Premiere Pro. And it is just an outstanding situation. That was the key reason. And that a lot of that can be attributed to Red Code Raw. To me, when you start this up, it feels like a machine. Yes, it's gonna take a little bit longer than that of like your typical you know, stills camera. But man, when this thing gets going, it is awesome. First and foremost, it's a cinema camera, so it's no recording limit. That for me was definitely a big deal. Resolution flexibility. The fact that it shoots up to 6K is amazing. As a matter of fact, you've got all sorts of combinations from 6K to 2K, from 24 frames per second, all the way to 120 frames per second. Now, it's typically when it comes to shooting uh, a sit down like this, I would shoot at 6K, uh, 24P. And then when it comes to like capturing my friends running, I'm generally staying around that 4K 60 because I just want the, the ability not only to slow things down, but to be able to do things with a less blurry image. As a typically one man shooter, autofocus was a big deal for me. So that way I can swap out this DSLR that I'm shooting on for this red camera, be able to get myself in focus. Also knowing that I have autofocus there for the time that I'm able to put this onto a gimbal, it's nice that I have that available to me. Now, another big selling point for me is global shutter. Now, I gotta be honest, when I hear people talk about global shutter, it kind of goes over my head a little bit because it becomes a little bit too scientific, as well as I think the examples that people use aren't necessarily practical to the way that I like to shoot. So for me, I shoot fast moving subjects. I shoot runners and, so, and I do a lot of whip pans. And one of the things that I do notice over a period of time is that this kind of jello effect can happen when you're using, I would say lesser quality um, type of cameras. And then particularly when it comes to having a global shutter, a lot of that additional blur that you don't necessarily want or like wobble effect is gone. The app is outstanding, not good, great. Not only can you use it as a remote control for the camera, but you can also use it for playing back your image. And so if you feel pressured that you need to get a monitor, pump your brakes, be able to get, grab a little cheap case, put, use your phone, and now you're able to be locked in and be able to see what's going on. Speaking of locked in, the fact that the app is so solid is attributed to the fact that you're connected through Wi-Fi. Another nice thing about the app itself is that it is customizable. So you can set up the different areas that you want to look at, be able to manipulate things around. On camera touchscreen, this is red going in a different direction. Typically when you buy a red camera, you get a brain and you have to do all these additional things in order to like view your image. The fact that you're able to view your image, change your scopes, be able to change your frame rates by using a touchscreen, this I think is a godsend. I have watched, I think, 50 different videos, and I don't think anyone mentioned one of the most obvious ways that you can power this camera. And that's literally by plugging it into a DC power source. And so if you're a person that's using RED in the way that a lot of our RED cameras are used in a very controlled environment, as long as you have external power that you can connect to by way of a wall outlet or something like that, you can power this camera up without needing to purchase batteries. Now for someone like myself who is gonna be out and about, is gonna be shooting runners uh, specifically and just likes a little bit more portability, then I would suggest getting the Canon BP955 batteries, which is what I'm using. Two of these gets me a little bit over three hours. The fact that I knew that I could get these, can these Canon batteries directly from RED at the time of purchase, that went into my decision making when I purchased this. There are now accessories galore. I think when this came out first in 20, at the end of 2020, accessories were a lot harder to come by. You get an RF to EF mount adapter directly in the box. And so if you already have a bunch of EF lenses, you're able to get into the game really quickly. Now, last price. 6K versus 34K, which is what it is for something like an Ari uh, uh, camera, which would be like the next level. It's like kind of like the final level, the, the, like, the automatic, like the God tier of when it comes to camera. This puts me right at kind of like 
just beneath God tier, but as you get higher up in terms of the cost of cameras, there are large jumps and bounds. And so I wanna create a certain amount of content over a period of time before I were to get into something like that. And then the last like month or so, I've shot exclusively on this camera. If you take anything away from this video, just recognize that, hey, like I'm new to this, but I'm certainly gonna put myself in a position to be true to it. So as I make these videos, I'm coming at you and from the perspective of, hey, I really enjoy this camera and I'm learning how to use it and I wanna make videos about some of the things that I'm learning. Now, if you're interested in buying this camera and not sure about what accessories, I got a video here for you and I've got an updated one uh, coming soon. So I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.